Hi, Bobby here. I'm a software sales engineer at Visual Planning, the simple resource management and software solution. Today I'm going to show you a quick demo of our web-based and tablet version of our software called VP Portal. Alright, here's our goal for today. In this video, I will show you how using Visual Planning can optimize your company's productivity. Whether you are an employee or a manager, a quality collaborative resource management and scheduling software is essential for any productive business. In this demo, you will learn how to apply the following points into your workflow. 1. Personalized dashboards. 2. Resource scheduling and editing. 3. VP What's Up. 4. Employee time off scheduling. and 5. Reporting and event listing by client. Today I will be showing you our web-based scheduling solution, VP Portal. Now let's get started. Here I have a link to uh, the cloud portal associated with my cloud environment. Once it loads, I'll click on OK to log in, and it will bring me to my first view, which is a dashboard. Similar to what you would see in the client version, this dashboard can display custom messages, images, events, and resource information, as well as reports. This display can be personalized through a robust permission system, allowing your employees to view specified events, announcements, or projects. So up here, we have a, a specified welcome to the form and portal message. We have a site listing that if I scroll down, will show all construction sites with some information based on the site. If I scroll down here, this is Asan, and this is all of Asan's events that are coming up. And on the right-hand side here is an example of a report. So here we have plan versus actual report across all projects. So it's a great way to be able to show personalized information as well as overall company information as well. We have four tabs to navigate, and we will start with the first tab titled Project Planner. Here we have a construction site schedule in a monthly view with a staff and vehicles listing on the left-hand side. Right now, this planner is scaled by month, but we can change it to working week or week by clicking on these tabs. So we'll click on here, it's working week. Click on here, it's week. Difference being week includes Saturday and Sunday. You can also shift between weeks and months by clicking on these arrows. So I'll we'll click on these arrows here, it'll shift me back to December. If I go again, it'll shift me back to October. If I hover my mouse over an event, Information associated with that event is displayed. If I click on an event and then click on the green edit pencil, a window will pop up allowing me to change resource data like project, staff, and vehicle, as well as start date and end dates. So let's say we want to make this, instead of four days, we'll make it two days. Click on it, click on two. Again, if we wanted to change anything, we, there are drop down menus like this. Click on OK. Ah, this resource is already occupied. Do you want to continue? So this is a great example of having constraints that can be configured in the client version. So Peter is already working on another project. Would you like to continue? Let's press cancel. So let's try doing it again. Let's do it with Kirk. Again, let's make this two days. Click on OK. And here you'll see it snap back to two days. OK? Just want to mention that everything done in the portal is all saved in real time. So if um, someone was using the client or PC version, they would be able to see anything that was changed in the portal on their version as well. If I click on an event and then click on the three dots, here it has an option to delete an event. So if I click on the that, I can delete it. Or I also have the option to split. So here is the yellow split button. If I click on split, so would you like to split the event? Click on confirm. And here you'll see that split into two. So now I can click and drag this over to another day, or I can also assign it to another project, like so. Again, resources are already being occupied, so I just click cancel and it'll go back. You can assign an employee to the schedule by clicking and dragging a staff member onto the schedule and releasing your mouse on the desired start date of the event. After you release the mouse, a window will pop up allowing you to assign a vehicle and change the duration of the event. So let's say I want to assign Kirk again. Just click and drag him over. You see the icon appears. Click, drag, let go. We can add a vehicle if you want. For now, let's not. And let's say the duration of the event will be three days. And you'll see that the end date changes. Let me click on OK. And you'll see here that Kirk is now on the schedule starting on the 19th. We can also have notifications enabled where, say, if someone schedules an event via the portal, someone will get notified via an email or on the client version that an event has been scheduled.
If you attempt to bug, double book a staff member, you will see the window that popped up before. Again, this is a great way to make sure you are not over utilizing your resources. The workload on the bottom is called load sites slash capacity employees. It represents how many employees are scheduled for that day. So I see here that the target is 10 and there are 50% of the target. And here is a list of the vehicles and we can schedule a vehicle the same exact way that we scheduled an employee. The second view is called staff agenda. And what's great about this is that we can also filter this. So say this is Hassan's portal. Using our powerful permission system, when Hassan logs in, he will only be able to see his events. And again, this is by month and we could change the scale here. So let's say that Hassan wanted to schedule a PTO day off. Let's say for another day. Let's do it for the 24th. Actually, let's go into the future. And let's do it for the 12th. Again, let's make it one day. And you'll see here that Hassan is now scheduled for PTO. And if I click on the pencil, you can edit the information again. Again, if you wanted to be able to see all events for the month, you can click on the little gear icon and then go to all. And then you can also navigate to working week like so and see what's going on for the week. We can also have hourly events here and will be scheduled by hour down here on the bottom if you schedule hourly events. Moving on, the third view is called site event list. This display shows a breakdown of every single event that has been scheduled for one site. We can edit or delete an event from this view as well as change what project is being shown by clicking on the gear icon. So if you wanted to edit an event, we can click on that and edit, edit some information. We can also change which project is being shown from high school, say to aquatic center, and it will change. Or we can click through, say city of Coventry. We can also filter even more by clicking on the gear icon and then searching. So let's say that we only wanted to be able to see Cindy, all events that Cindy did for this one project. So she only did one. If we go back and delete, you'll see that Peter has a lot. So we search Peter. Here are all the events Peter has done for this one job. And again, start date, end date, and duration are what's listed here, but we can you know, always add or subtract any information that you would like to see here. Our last view is title reporting. Here I have two reports. So the first one in a histogram format is an analysis chart of plan versus actual hours. As I move my mouse, you'll see that the numbers change. If I click on the gear icon, click on here and go to construction site analysis. This is uh, pretty much the same report, but broken down even further. So here you'll see it's broken down by month, but also by site and by employee. And as I scroll across, you can see more information. You can also print any report by going there and clicking on print and you won't have to edit anything. And again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We can create many different types of reports, including pie charts, lines, and area reports as well. One last thing I wanted to show you today was the VP What's Up feature of visual planning. This feature allows users to create chat rooms where users can collaborate on projects or other activities. In this example, I have two chat rooms, one for HR and another for project updates. In each room, there is an example of what some conversations could look like. Every time there's a new message, you will see a number in red indicating how many unread messages there are. This is another great way to make sure all of your users are on the same page, making sure nothing falls through the cracks. I hope you have a better understanding of how visual planning works. For more information, or if you'd like to sign up for a demo, go to visual-planning.com. Lastly, make sure to follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter for all resource management and scheduling related content. Have a good one.